Number 51. A compound with a molar mass of about 28 grams per mole contains 85.7% carbon and 14.3% hydrogen by mass. Write the Lewis structure for a molecule of the compound. Okay, now I think this one also was a one that got slipped in when they recreated the chemistry textbook for OpenStax. As of right now, for the Adams first textbook, we did not do any math that had to do with percentages, like as you see here, 85.7% carbon and 14.3% hydrogen. So it might be a little bit confusing, but like I say, have no fear, Christina is here. <laughs> so I will show you how to do this one if you guys are a little bit confused. So right off the bat, I see that we have percentages, right? And I see that they're talking about a molar mass. Molar mass is basically the same thing as a molecular mass. And we know that we can always find a molecular mass if it comes from an empirical mass or an empirical formula. And that's what we can find out with these percentages. We could always find out an empirical formula and then we could take it to its molecular formula. And from there, we can find out what the molar mass is. Now, what is the process by going from percentages to molecular formula? This is what I want you guys to write down. So this is pretty standard, all right? So you can always go from a percent to grams to moles of that compound to a mole ratio. And at this time, you're probably like, what? But don't worry, it's, it's pretty easy. And then from then there, you can get your empirical formula, which will finally bring you to your molecular formula and which they give you that mass, all right? So it looks like there's four steps, actually five steps if we need to, but let's get down to it. The first step is pretty simple, right? Every percentage is made out of 100%. So if we could just equate that to grams and we say 100%, well, I, I chose to work on a 100 gram sample. Basically, the percents that you're given are going to be the gram values. So if we added these up, 85.7 and 14.3, you should get 100%. So I will say we have 85.7% carbon and we have 14.3% hydrogen. So if we go by the first rule by just stating that, okay, we used, you know, 100 grams, this would be equal to 85.7 grams of carbon and this is 14.3 grams of hydrogen, and that's the first step. Now, we've done how to go from grams of something to moles of something, right? We use our ratios, and remember that one mole of anything is always the mass on the periodic table. So I'll just say, um, you know, molar mass, mm, in grams on periodic table. So that's where you're getting that from. So I will multiply by a ratio and put grams of carbon on the bottom because I don't want this anymore. I want moles. And now if I look over here, carbon is 12.1. That's the molar mass of carbon. So it would be 12.01 grams of carbon for every one mole of carbon. And that's how grams would cancel out. And now you're left with moles, which is this over here, right? So I'm just going to do them side by side. It's easier to do it that way, I think. So grams of hydrogen on the bottom, mole of hydrogen up top. It looks like roughly, you know, one mole is one gram. I'm just going to put what they give on the periodic table. So one mole is 1.008 grams. And now let's find out the moles for both of them. So if we get out Calci and we say 85.7 divided by 12.01, um, it would roughly be if we do three sig figs, uh, 7.14, if we rounded, so that's 7.14 moles of carbon, and then if we do this, 14.3 divided by, I mean, it's gonna, it's basically gonna be the same number, uh, it would be 14.2, so you, you lost one number, but if you put 14.3, it's fine. Okay, now, what are we gonna do next? How do we get a mole ratio? From your moles of individual elements to a mole ratio, all you have to do is just analyze the different moles that you have. So in this case, we have two different ones. We have 7.14 moles of carbon and 14.2 moles of hydrogen. And all you have to do to each one is you're just going to divide by the lowest 
oops, divide by the lowest number of moles. So between 7.14 and 14.2, 7.14 would be the lowest number. So I would divide 7.14 by both of them. And if you had three, you would divide it by all three of them. And now you get a nice whole number ratio. In this case, at least, fingers crossed. It should be a whole number or it should be like, you know, a half or something. But hopefully you get a whole number at this stage of the game. So this would turn out to be one mole of carbon. And now 14.2 divided by 7.14. You get 1.988, but that's really, really, really close to 2. So it's at this stage of the game where you kind of want to turn it into whole numbers. All right. So now, voila, since we have that mole ratio, we now have an empirical formula. And it's just basically the moles that they gave you here. So I have one carbon and two hydrogen. So my formula is CH2, and that's your empirical formula. Now we have to go from empirical formula to molecular formula because they give me a molar mass. So how do we do that? Well, we have to take our molar mass and divide by our empirical mass. I'm just going to put EM. EM, empirical mass. So we know our empirical formula, but what's our empirical mass? Well, you got to take one carbon and add two hydrogens to it, right? This was, I think, maybe chapter two when we did this. So use your numbers from the periodic table. You would use 12.01 and then two times 1.008, right? And so I'm just going to set it up over here. Our molar mass that they gave us was 28 grams per mole. And if you guys find out the empirical mass, right, it would be 12.01 plus... 2 times 1.008, you would get 14.02, and now you would divide those. So 28 divided by 14 roughly is going to be 2. So what does that mean? This means that your molecular formula is 2 times the empirical formula. So all you have to do is just take that number and distribute it between the subscripts of your empirical formula, which was CH2. So there was one carbon and two hydrogen, so you just times each one by two. So your new formula would be C2H4. And now we have our Lewis structure, which is, well, we have the compound, right? We have C2H4, but now we have to actually draw it out. So now we go back to our rules for Lewis structures, right? Remember, hydrogen can never be in the middle. So in this case, it looks like we have two carbons in the middle, and I have to divvy these hydrogens up fairly. You try to want to make it as symmetrical as possible. So I'll put two hydrogens on the one side and two hydrogens on the other side. That's my blueprint. Now I'll draw valence electrons ar around each atom. So each hydrogen has one valence and each carbon has four. So I'm just going to put those dots around those. Each hydrogen has one, one, two, three, and four. And then each carbon has four. Yeah, so each hydrogen has one, each carbon has four. And now you will make those single bonds. So one bond for here, one bond for here, only one bond for here, one bond and one bond. And then you check all the hydrogens are going to be good because they always want to have two electrons. But this carbon has two, four, six, seven electrons. And this carbon has two, four, six, seven. So you're going to need a double bond, and now you have the octet rule, right? This carbon now has two, four, six, eight, and so does the other one. So that's it. 51 is done. So there's a lot of math for this one. You had to figure out what the actual molecular formula was, and then you had to draw it. But if you guys can get this, you guys are good. But if not, don't worry. We're actually going to do empirical formula in, I think, in two chapters from now. So that's when we will really dive into those, all right? So thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what you think of the comments. Subscribe to the channel. It helps us out greatly. Thank you so much for that. And I will see you guys in the next question. See ya.